when you are right and these goods have arrived, and there you are, Joki, with all these containers of medical apparatus, and you are thinking, where do I start? In your mind, what was going on? On one hand, I was hopeful, I was optimistic. On the other hand, of course, uh, there were many uncertainties of mm. how things will, uh, will work out. But I just delved in, and I think that's one of the most important lessons in life. That, mm. uh, you just start. Start with where you are, start with what you have. Just start. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending from where you're watching us from. It is always such a delight to come into your screen and just to have conversation, to inspire each other, and just to grow one another. And this night is yet another opportunity where God has given us where we will be able to speak to you, the woman, so that you may arise and shine because your light has come. And tonight, as I have promised, we have an amazing, amazing, amazing person in our show tonight. And we are just about to introduce her to you. You you better call your girlfriend. You better call that sister because you don't want to miss out on this amazing story because it's going to inspire you. It's going to slap you into some reality and so that you will <clears throat> arise and function into that which God has called you to function. So allow me to do a proper introduction. So... Tonight, we have a guest by the name Joki Wangi. And this is who she is. Joki Mwangi is the CEO of Kijani Medical Limited, a leading manufacturer and a distributor of medical consumables in East Africa. Over the last 10 years, she has built Kijani from an idea conceived on a kitchen countertop, imagine that, into a million dollar turnover company. Kijani is a company committed to ensuring everyone has access to quality, affordable healthcare, and also through innovation and development of cost-effective medical devices for Africa and the world. Her company has been awarded the, car, the coveted Top Women in Business Award for successive years. Joki is very passionate about entrepreneurship, mentorship, and gender equality. She leads the Stawi Foundation, an NGO committed to the wholesome empowerment of the woman and the girl child. She is also a founding member of Medical Devices Association of Kenya, a private sector organization of medical devices and equipment companies that lobbies, regulates, and builds capacity in the medical devices and equipment industry in Kenya. Joki loves to read, travel, and create memories to the family and Please help me welcome Madam Joki Wangi to the Deborah Generation Show, where we speak hope, we inspire women, and we call out the woman to arise. Karibu sana, Joki. Thank you very much, Helen. It's an honor to be here and a privilege as well. I can't wait. I feel like I should be at the audience and just enjoy the show. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. Yeah. So, who is Joki? Please introduce yourself to the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Njoki Mwangi. Mm -hmm. I am a mother of two twins, a boy and a girl, now aged about five and a half. Mm. Um, I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship. I run a company called Kijani Medical Limited, where we deal with the manufacturing and the distribution of medical devices. Mm. Yes. Perfect. 
and um, what do you love like in terms of what do you do in your free space in your leisure time what foods do you like let me let me just begin that so that we can get to understand the personality <laughs> <laughs> so what what food do you like what is uh, your favorite food uh, my favorite food is actually ugali mm -hmm. and fish ah. and sukuma wiki wow and if you want some avocado there for me ah. So Fantastic. Avocado is great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Wow, nice. Uh, favorite color? Green. Mm. Kijani. Nice. <laughs> um, what do you do in your alone time? Mm -hmm. What 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 makes you relax? What makes you it takes you into that space of peace and oneness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Myself. Um, I love to do meditation, especially in the mornings mm -hmm. uh, during my quiet time. I do some yoga exercise as well, wow. yeah, just to relax. I love reading as well and journaling. Wow! Mm. If you want to look like that, <laughs> better do those things. <laughs> Anyway, it's such an amazing, uh, I, I'm so excited to have you on this show. And uh, we've been on a series uh, about Ruth. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at Ruth uh, of the Bible mm -hmm. and looking at her life journey and uh, just seeing how this was just a simple woman who uh, got married and maybe had visions and dreams about her life, her marriage, you know, her children, how she would get her children grow, uh, bring them up and see them grow into their old age. But boom, life happens. And mm -hmm. before she even gets to be a mother, uh, she loses the husband. And, and as if life was cut out to just be painful for her she loses the brother also to to the husband because in those early ages uh, there used to be a culture where the brother would even inherit the woman so that they can continue the lineage of that family or of that name but even that was cut mm -hmm. out so she did not even have that opportunity and this and as if that was not enough the father-in-law also dies. And they are found in this homestead three women who are going through such a painful time in their life. They have lost their, uh, their, their husbands. And uh, what that represented for them, it is that their lineage or their, their generation has been cut just from that. that there is not going to be a continuation Mm -hmm. of their lineage or of their name but we see her uh, Ruth at some point when the mother-in-law uh, really begs them please go back to your homes and I, I release you I give you my blessing that you may go there and find uh, a new mates who maybe would marry you therefore you can continue your life I imagine them to be at the prime of their age young women who um, would still get married and get to raise a family. and uh, But Ruth decides, no, I'm going to leave that all behind me, but I'm going to stick with you, my mom-in-law. Mm -hmm. And she goes on to say that wherever you go, I shall go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. And she makes that conscious decision to travel with the mother-in-law to a land that she had never been to new people, to new culture, to new way of doing things, to new God, to a new God that, you know, she was not used to, to a new way of life. And I think, or I believe, that to any person going into the unknown, it can be very scary. A lot of us are always held back from trying something new because of that fear of, I don't know the outcome. I don't know if I will thrive in this. I don't know if I will make it in this new environment. But we see the courage that this woman had and 
the conviction that she had that no matter what, I, I may not know what is going to happen in my future, but I choose to dare to believe that there, there could be something great ahead of me. And she chooses mm -hmm. to move with her mother-in-law. And we see them in this new land, and uh, we see their relationship. I, I feel like they really had a good relationship with the mother-in-law, and the mother-in-law really was touched with this act of loyalty from this lady that she she made it her agenda and her mission to ensure that she had secured at some point in the, in the bible it says will i not find security for you my daughter mm. so the heart of the of naomi was really uh for for making sure that ruth's life transformed and it tra it transformed in a better way and Ruth, on the other side, did everything possible with such zeal and such tenacity and such a positive mindset, believing, I'm sure she believed, there are greater days ahead of me. And this story inspired me. And as I was thinking about who can we relate to here in the Bora generation with that kind? and that audacity just to step out and 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 be be great in whatever it is that we're doing and i remember mm, i have a friend <laughs> <laughs> whose story has always inspired me and because i am so generous i would want the ladies to hear this story so please how did kijani happen oh uh helen that's a, a, a long long story that uh, we shall delve into mm. uh but the story of ruth the story of ruth uh embodies an an ally a, a sort of ally. what happens when two women decide to be allies yeah. and not go against each other mm. and it's a really beautiful story true uh because in the in the end we find uh, we find both Naomi on the winning side yes. and also Ruth and it was because of what they that friendship that uh, that, that made them you know go, come and grow together mm -hmm. i really love that story and uh, what actually touches me about this story is also the confidence that mm -hmm. uh, that, that 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 Ruth embodied yeah. where she had the option of staying but she said no uh, where you go, I will mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. Your people mm -hmm. shall be my people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That is confidence. True. She knew what she wanted and she went ahead with it. It's yes. something I think as, as, as women we can, we, we can learn. Mm -hmm. And another thing that really inspires me with Ruth is her humility. Mm -hmm. She did as she was told. Mm -hmm. The places that she was sent, she just went and did as she was exactly told. Exactly as she was told. Yes, and, and, and I think when you marry these two, a confidence and uh, humility, uh, it's, it's such a beautiful blend. Mm. Yeah, so that's inspiring for me. Wow. Uh, so if you go back to Kijani, how was Kijani born? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think... Uh, it's it's a very long story, but but uh, even before it was born, I think God uh, was just uh, step by step taking me to it. It was born ten years ago in twenty twelve, mm. uh, but the idea was conceived years before that. Uh, so what happened in uh, in twenty eleven, a year before I started it, uh, was that I found myself. Uh, in, in Iran, I was newly married. I had just quit my job from one of our media houses mm -hmm. uh, and uh, relocated uh, to be with my spouse. And there I tried uh, my hand and, uh, in, in business. Mm -hmm. And then um, a year later, it was time for us to come back to Kenya. And my idea was I really want to do business because when I was quitting, it was my vision mm -hmm. to to start a business. And uh, so when we were coming back, I was worried and thinking, uh, what can I do? What can I take back from Iran into Kenya? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in Iran, uh, remember I was doing uh, some tea business, mm -hmm. importing from Kenya yeah. and, uh, and exporting there. So I thought, what can work in Kenya? Maybe from Iran. Mm. And uh, because I was facing a few challenges with, uh, you know, being a country that was under sanctions then, getting dollars, so I thought yeah. maybe I could do some sort of butter trade, mm -hmm. get something from here because the business was still ongoing mm -hmm. into Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought about medical devices because they are, were quite advanced there. Oh. Why medical? <laughs> I don't remember you at any point. <laughs> why medical? <laughs> why not any other thing? Uh, why medical? I, um, during my final years in undergraduate, I used to work for my sister, who is a doctor. Uh -huh. She used to run a clinic, so I was an admin there. So, And that's why I interacted a lot with the medical devices. Mm -hmm. So it, that was at the back of my mind, mm -hmm. for one. Mm -hmm. And uh, being in Iran also, they were advanced, and I was thinking if I can do a sort of butter trade and get things here in Iran, get paid, there they buy for me the goods in, 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 in their own currency, currency and send it over. Mm. That was uh, roughly just my idea. Mm. Uh, so when I came back to Kenya and I saw there was that gap of having quality items uh, affordably priced. So I thought, why can't I try that? So I got a few samples when I was coming back and I, 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 I took them to a few health facilities mm -hmm. just to try out. Yeah, and I would go to say a hospital, say Grunana, and they, and they ask me, oh, what are you selling? I have this product. And they say, oh, we don't need this product. Do you have a bed? Mm -hmm. And uh, the entrepreneur in, in me you. would <laughs> not say no. I would say, let me get back to you. <laughs> go find the <laughs> bed. This, yes, and go find the bed. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, basically, that's how let it Let me started. take you back. Mm -hmm. You said you were newly married and you had to move. Uh, to where your spouse was working from, this is a new land. Yes. And when you talk of Iran, uh, the countries that come in mind are like Afghanistan. Uh, these are two countries that uh, have hardships, na war, bombs, that are anywhere, anyhow. Eh? Mm -hmm. And this is an Islamic country. The, the culture is different, the, the way people behave, the way Kenya ni unagote anagatukila mse. How was that for you? How, how did you adapt to the culture? The, first, you are newly married. <laughs> then you move to a new country. It's totally different from where you are coming from, the culture, the food, everything. I've quit my job. You've quit your job. <laughs> How do you deal with that? How yeah. do you even set your mind to the point where you are thinking, mm, I can do business in this country? <laughs> uh, it was quite daunting at first because everything was new. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's such a rich country. It's, it was such a rich experience. Mm -hmm. It was exciting and in the end, very fulfilling to be there. Uh, so at first, I even had to learn the Persian language. Wow. They, they used the Persian language. Mm. And in there, I also got an opportunity because I met somebody just before I started the tea business, and they, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, they would be teaching uh, salsa. And I said, oh, I have a big house. Can we try this? Uh, See, in, 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 in my in my in my home. <laughs> in the house. Yes, and then yes, we had students, Iranians, and the international community. I love you for free. And uh, <laughs> yes, and I remember we were charging about twenty dollars per <laughs> hour, and we'd split this halfway 50-50 with the teacher, and all I'd provided was space. <laughs> hey, they you in you. Yes, I remember who'd ask me, are, are women in Kenya like this? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I I just want they to keep busy, keep busy before. doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I made uh, rich friendships there. Wow. They are quite warm people as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very diverse country. Like uh, uh, they have a lot of biblical sites there. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, where there's uh, we visited where Esther was buried, the tomb. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's in the it's in the southern part of the country. Wow. Uh, the Persian language, it's also very rich. The mm. food is great. Mm. Um, 
they 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 are quite and the women are also quite some of the traders that I I dealt with in the tea business who are doing serious import and export of of of, of these products were actually women so sometimes the image that we have of 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 maybe oppressed mm. and, 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 and 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 women is quite on the ground uh Not different. Yes. We took a ground and we were different. Yes, it was uh, it was actually amazing. I learned a few things actually from wow. from 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 these uh, women who would do good big business and uh, in terms of trading and also production. Wow. And quite yes. an opportunity you saw there tea because I know for a fact this guy is love tea. Yes. This country is love tea. And actually okay. when they come to visit Kenya The only thing I've, I've, I've encountered a few of them. The only thing they do on the last day before they travel back, they want to buy the real tea, the, the real Kenyan tea. So, yes. how was that? Um, Or how did you go about doing this tea business? What inspired? <laughs> was it because they, you saw that they love tea, or what drove you into that? Uh, actually also it was through uh, a, 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 a friend and uh, who was trying to venture into into the same they mm. were they were Iranian uh, but they didn't quite they had the market they drink quite a bit of tea like mm. now that we've spoken for about 10 minutes here would be on our mm. third cup or something <laughs> and um, so and he he didn't even have a concept of of, of, of how it looks in mm. the farm. So we did that and 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 uh, what I could do is uh, get them better terms of buying from our place to 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 export there. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah with time I also got to to get a few clients who are buying as well and sell to them. Wow. So just looking at that bit of your story would you say that um at some point in your life between when you got married or that the, the 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 time when you got married you were like life prompted you to step out of your comfort zone completely like i feel like your life was was a 360 <laughs> degrees this girl is a corporate person in this beautiful media house that we know and then you get married that is a major change in your life and whoop you're not staying in this country you're moving so did you feel at some point like this is a real test of you stepping out into the unknown or into your comfort into what you knew and were comfortable in and now did you have questions of okay what what next Yes, of course it was it was daunting uh, being that uh, everything I was starting a new a new life mm-hmm. in a new place and uh, even though I was psychologically prepared mm-hmm. to to start a business and jump in from employment into self-employment of course that also comes with its own challenges yeah. and of course also some reservations how is it going to work is it going to work even at all uh but uh it's a work of faith like i say also in business every day you open a business you you you, you put your faith muscle yes. into into the works True. um so it was daunting for me of course i had those reservations and and you know even fears is it, is this gonna work but i stepped out uh in in in, in faith I was also much younger so maybe that helped. Oh yeah, that is, <laughs> I agree with you. When you're much younger you have this audacity just go with it. Right? <laughs> Whatever happens happens. Yeah. But um for how long were you in Iran? Um about uh, about three years on and off I would come back and, and then go again. Uh-huh. Yeah, for, for about three years. So here you are. You are about to come back to the country. You have sold tea. And tea they have bought. And they owe you big time. 
and here you are thinking what do i go with back home so that uh, i can now pick up from where my vision or my dream uh, where you had put it you know you had said you had quitted your job and you wanted to go into business so that that transition now you have wamekuwekea vitu kwa containers umekuja kenya yes you had worked for your sister as an admin but you are really not a medic so how was that when you arrived and these goods have arrived and there you are joki with all these containers of medical apparatus and you are thinking where do i start in your mind what was going on i was on one hand i was hopeful i was optimistic good for you <laughs> Uh, on the other hand of course uh, there were many uncertainties of mm. how things will uh, will work out but i just delved in and i think that's one of the most important lessons in life that mm. uh, you just start start with where you are start with what you have just start you don't know how the 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 the, 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 the path will go but uh, the important thing is just to start so and i started and for sure i have learned a lot of things in in, in in business i have a i have a masters in strategic uh, management mm. an mba but i tell you in business uh, what you learn in one week is yes. not equivalent to what you learn in business school for two I years i completely agree yes because uh, once those things landed and uh, of course i had always operated with principles even back at my employment place mm. and i remember i had a big challenge even to start where we got the goods in then we had a, a problem at the port and uh, somebody was asking for something <laughs> and uh, and i was like this okay Kenya. yes i'm a christian and so to do this how does this work and uh, i remember that, uh, that 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 is when uh, the first real test test came in mm -hmm. and because uh, they said uh, so this is what you place under the table a fraction mm -hmm. or you do the right way and and, 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 and as how much how much it is and it is like five times and remember this is a time whereby we just come back we spent mm -hmm. all the family savings yes. into starting this yes so we don't have any extras and we were like so here is a real test to do the right thing or to do this take this other option and it was difficult uh but that meant after i made the right decision and even had to borrow from a few friends to make the to do it the right way uh then it becomes easier with business in mm. the last 10 years you mm. just know this is this is the way the path i follow yes it is a bit more difficult and because it's but it is the right way. but it is the right way yes. yeah so those are the things that happened in the beginning something that you don't learn in business school yeah yes i'm, I'm prompted to ask a question because we are looking at, at as we were looking at ruth eh, and somebody would, would say but ruth's husband was dead so she was alone but here you are you had your spouse but the reason why you even moved to this new country was because you wanted to be with your spouse that is number one i imagine and somebody would have said uh, if it were me would have gone enjoyed the country travel around move around, just be at ease why think of making my own money in this new like joking <laughs> Why would you not re relax and just be the good wife, make breakfast, make lunch, make dinner, make sure their home is... But here you are, you are thinking, mm, go to work, girl. And uh, I, I love that energy. I love that energy because uh, a lot of women lose themselves, lose their identity, lose their oomph, their energy, either when they get into a relationship or when they settle into marriage they lose everything that represents them and now their life is becomes a shadow or they leave behind the the shadow of 
their spouse. What made you still keep your identity? What made you say, regardless of the fact that I quit my job to be with my spouse, I'm not just going to be a joy rider in this, but I'm going to be an active participator into the growth of everything that represents us as a family, us as a couple, and also myself as a person. What made you keep that? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Um, I think we all have a purpose. And I remember in the beginning while uh, I was trying to still think about the business that I want to set up, I became a housewife for a few months. Mm. And um, that was not the purpose for me. Mm. And, and, and I think for a long while, I, I knew that. And uh, sometimes it's, it, it can be somebody's purpose. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it, it, is a, it is very wise to know what your purpose is, what mm -hmm. you're meant to do, because then you do it well. Then you bring your whole wholesome Helen yes. into it. Yes. Uh, because it's also beautiful to be a housewife, if yes. that is what is set mm -hmm. for you. But it wasn't set for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I knew that for quite a while that I want to make an impact, that I want to to leave behind mm -hmm. some some legacy. And mm -hmm. my business has enabled me to do that. Mm -hmm. From the onset, actually, I was able, even I think before the business started, mm -hmm. to take up uh, uh, kids who are not able to go to school and, and, and pay for their school fees. Mm -hmm. I think now... As uh, Kijani, we are on the fourth one uh, to just fill that gap, and uh, that impact is is is, is what uh, ful fulfills me, mm. and uh, that's one of my purposes. So if I didn't leave that, then uh, it means I wouldn't be who I am. So I strongly believe in that, and I think that's why I didn't take that route. Mm. I to be probably a housewife mm. or be live under somebody else's mm. uh, shadow. Provision or shadow. Or, 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 or shadow. Yeah. Yes, and I am glad that I, I was able to, God help me to be able to do that. Wow. The other thing about, let me, let me just say this. Before I met you and got to know you, that we can say, we have conversations, we have done a couple of things together. I've seen you do some great things. I saw you from the screens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is <laughs> huge. Like, how can you be this gentle, small looking, nice lady and have such muscles in the marketplace? Actually, the first measure of your name and the first image I saw of you was in a women's conference that you, I was in and uh, you were to be a guest who was speaking to the ladies. And I went home after that session and I was like, wow. And then in the second instance, I see you uh, being in this award, the top 40 under 40 women in business on the newspaper and I'm seeing I saw, I know this lady, I've seen this lady somewhere, and I'm thinking, how, how do you carry yourself with such grace and such humility, even after you, God has enabled you to step into some platform that some women only dream of, but may never even step into but yet you still carry yourself with such grace, with such humility, to the point that you are able to serve others. Because I have seen you serve. You even have a foundation that takes care of the, the woman and the girl child. You are that passionate. You are, you are, you are to that level of, you are, you are not, you've not separated yourself from the humanity of the human touch, touching people's life and touching... How how does that happen? Uh, you make it sound so grandiose. <laughs> it is. Believe me. 
<laughs> I know you like to play <laughs> models, but girl, I, I think the category you're mentioning was 2019, uh, and that was uh, top women in business, mm-hmm. the health categories. Yes. And uh, yes, we were really humbled to get that award. Yeah. And uh, I think some of the aspects that they were looking at then uh, in, in that was integrity and, 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 you know, structures of business, how business is carried on in the mm. organization. Uh, so how am I able to do this? I think it's just realizing, one, mm-hmm. that uh, as, 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 as you move up, everybody's trying to wing it. Everybody's trying. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and uh, so, and number two, we are all basically just here trying to wing it, and we are stewards. We are stewards of all these things. We are here to make an impact. Mm. Yes, without an impact, after our our lives are done, then it would never have made sense yes i i happen to i happen to be in a mentorship program in 20 is it 2018 mm-hmm. in berlin and uh, in that program we were made to do our own obituary and we actually went to some real graves wow <laughs> yes and in those graves you were meant to do your own obituary and and, and that had me thinking what would I want to leave behind when I'm, when actually this is done? It was actually very daunting, but <laughs> it was a good exercise because now you see the end of your life and you're thinking, so what, what have I been doing here and on what would I like? I have a chance now to yeah, make and make it happen. Yes. Wow. I, I wish we can all have that <laughs> opportunity and just write our own obituary. It's quite scary because uh, they, they, they had these people who were like undertakers and you know, oh my and goodness, and, 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 and they are real graves and you have to do an obituary for yourself and how you want it to read at the end of your life. It was quite something and I, I wake up call. So in the end, it's just that we you, we wing it as you grow, and you're just a steward making impact uh, in people's lives as you elevate yours. Wow. You cannot miss the next episode. We're going to just unravel this woman. <laughs> <man. laughs> and I said it's going to be awesome. So see you next time. In make sure you have invited a girlfriend, make sure you've invited that sister, and keep it here, keep it locked at Deborah Generation Show on Wema TV, the voice of hope. See you next time.